guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing my five top makeup tips for trans women. I know that I have a lot of trans viewers and if you are not trans don't feel like this video won't have anything to do with you. If you are a cisgender woman with PCOS and you may have some five o'clock shadow I do have some tips and tricks for you. If you just want to learn how to highlight and contour I also have tips for you in this video. So just because you are not trans does not mean that this video does not suit you. So before I ramble too much, don't forget to hit the subscribe button which is down there and give the video a thumbs up. And without further ado, let's get on to my five top makeup tips for trans women. So the first and most important step I think is covering a five o'clock shadow. And yes, I do not have a five o'clock shadow anymore. So this trick I no longer use but let me tell you this is something that I used for years and years and years while I got laser hair removal and that was covering my five o'clock shadow I did use an orange concealer by LA girl cosmetics unfortunately I don't have that anymore so we are going to be using red lipstick it works just the same so I'm gonna be taking this Anastasia red lipstick in the shade Ruby it is a matte red lipstick and I'm going to be taking a shader lid brush E56 this is just a extremely small brush so I can really get where I want the product to be because we don't want to go too crazy with this so I am just going to load up my brush on both sides really coating it evenly and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this on the areas that I have beard this was the absolute worst place I used to get five o'clock shadow was my upper lip it was probably one of the hardest areas to get to go away and the reason that we use red lipstick is because the red cancels out the blue tone of the actual five o'clock shadow beard whatever you want to call it so a little bit of this goes a long way you just want enough to cancel out the purple another area that I used to get a lot of hair was right here on the chin and this is just going to make sure that when you lay your foundation down there's no color peeking through and it doesn't look like you have a beard so once you are done all set color correcting we will move on to tip number two and that is going to be a full coverage foundation this is a full coverage, long wearing, and matte foundation. It's probably the best. And this is the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Wear Foundation. So I'm gonna take about two pumps on the back of my hand. I did three. I just don't know how to count. And I'm gonna take a sponge. This is just the Morphe Highlight and Contour Sponge. And the first area that I'm going to go is I'm going to cover this area. I don't really wanna disturb the product underneath. I just want to cover it so you can't see the red. This may take one, two, or three layers of foundation really to get this orange slash red covered. It's just how it is. I've honestly not found a different way to do this that works as good. As you guys see on my chin area, the red has completely disappeared. You cannot see it through the foundation and you also wouldn't be able to see your five o'clock shadow. Now we're gonna move on to covering the mustache area. We're going to do the same exact thing that we did with the chin area and we are just going to lightly go over the area that we applied it. We don't really wanna to press too hard. We don't wanna disturb any of the red underneath. We just want it to go over and cover the red so we don't look crazy. We are going to move on to step number three, and that is going to be highlighting. I am going to use some concealer. This is very important, especially if you feel like your foundation isn't full coverage enough and you can still see a little bit of redness peeking through. This is when you can go ahead and fix a lot of that. So I'm gonna just apply it underneath my eyes like normal, but I'm also going to apply a generous amount to my chin, to my upper lip, this is just going to add a little bit of coverage if we need it down the center of my nose on my forehead and a little bit underneath our actual cheekbone. So the tip that I like to do with the concealer is when I do it, I really like to drag it all the way back here. And what that's going to do is actually it's going to widen your face. That's why you see a lot of drag queens pulling their concealer all the way back. It gives you a more feminine appearance. We're not gonna be doing it as dramatically as a drag queen, but you get the idea. We're dragging it all the way back because we want our face to have a more of a wider appearance. 
as you see I'm not really using any brushes for this I just think that the sponge works 10,000 times better you get a overall better coverage and your skin looks a little bit more natural than if you were to cake it on with a brush so taking the round end of the sponge we are going to go ahead and apply this underneath our eye we are going to first start pushing it in the actual center that's where we want most of our product to be and then when I feel like we don't have much left that is when I'm going to start dragging it backwards so this is where we get a little bit more subtle than the drag queens we don't really drag the product back there we just use whatever is left on the sponge to drag it back and that's just going to raise our cheekbones just a little and this is a tip that I still use to this day you want to make sure that you really do stay kind of on this high point of your cheek you don't want to drag it all the way down here because that will kind of defeat the purpose so just staying right along this actual cheekbone is really what's going to create the illusion that your face is wider so we are going to move on to step four and that is contouring and highlighting with actual powder so what I'm gonna do is take the Anastasia contour kit and I'm gonna take this shade right here and a Morphe M527 which is just a fluffy paddle brush and I am going to first bronze up my skin I like to do a fish face and apply it right in the actual hollows of my cheek really focusing the product at the base and then we're going to blend upward so contouring is going to refine things make them a little bit smaller it is going to change the actual illusion of the shape of something and we're going to do the same thing to the other side just kind of sucking in and seeing right where my actual natural cheekbone is we're going to run underneath that second most important area to contour especially for trans women is going to be your hairline I think that that's probably something I am very insecure about I really don't like my hairline a lot of people are gonna tell me there's nothing wrong with my hairline but it's an insecurity of mine so I just like to take my contour brush and I like to focus it right out here on the actual temples because that is the actual widest part of my skull and so I'm gonna try to refine that just a little bit with some contouring so I like to focus it really right up in the actual hairline and then when I have nothing left on the brush I kind of just buff whatever's left so at this point we have kind of a halo I guess you would say of contour and in the center we have light so that's gonna kind of make it seem like this is protruding out and everything else is sinking in we got a five head we make it look like a three head how about that people another area that's very important for trans women to contour is going to be the jawline right now I really don't have an issue with my jawline because I really have put on so much weight so it's kind of just all gone to my face but I'm still going to contour it a little bit a cisgender woman's jawline is a lot softer than a cisgender males just biology so I'm gonna take that same brush and I am going to kind of just soften my jawline I don't want anything too harsh so that is why I'm going to just dust it over and another thing I like to do is I like to take advantage of my chin so I do have a little bit of a pointy chin so I just kind of go from where my actual chin is like indented and I go back and that's just going to make it seem like I have more of a pointed softer jaw than I normally do so as you guys see that really does just change the shape of my jaw entirely so the next place that I like to contour that I think really does feminize my face is my nose it's a little bit more on the masculine side and I don't like it it's just the Italian in me so I'm gonna take a smaller brush this is the Smith 110 and the same contour powder and I am just going to run this contour powder right along the side of my nose so what that's gonna do is that's really gonna slim down the appearance and make it look like 
my nose is a lot smaller than it actually is. So I'm gonna do that on both sides. I'm gonna take it just a little bit farther in than where my actual nose is, so it slims it down. As you see, it just makes my nose right here look a lot smaller. And then another important thing I like to do is take a little bit of that contour powder and run it right underneath. That's just going to give it the appearance of it being slightly lifted, which is what we want. We just want a smaller, daintier nose. So as for the highlighting portion, we are going to take this banana shade in this Kat Von D shade light contour powder thing. And I'm going to take it on a fluffy Sigma brush. This is the Sigma Spotlight Duster F37. And I am just going to take it on the brush and I am going to just kind of press it in this area of my face where I want to highlight just a little bit more. So that's going to be this top of this cheekbone right here just to widen my face just a little bit and a little bit underneath the eyes just to get rid of some of those dark circles that, you know, we have so much of. I am going to apply it just a little bit underneath the contour area so it makes our cheekbones look like they are even higher than they are. Fake it till you make it, people. That is the best advice I have for up-and-coming trans women. Fake it until you make it. It's exactly what I did. So as you guys see the difference in the sides of my face, you just see that this side is just my cheekbone looks more defined on this side than it does this side. I'm just going to do the same thing over here, applying it right underneath my eye and dragging it back just on this high point of my cheek. I don't want to take it down where we have our contour. Like I said, I want to keep it right on top of the actual natural cheekbone. If you're feeling ballsy and you feel like, you know, you still see a little bit of red on your upper lip or anything, feel free to just take this powder and just kind of dust it over top. It's just going to brighten just a little and take any of that away. And the last tip I have, and that is tip number five, and that is going to be that less is more. You do not have to pack on a ton of makeup to be perceived as female. That is definitely something that I have learned over the last couple of years is that the more natural that you look, the more you tend to blend in. You can feel free. Makeup is an expressive art. Feel free to wear as much or as little as you want. Don't feel that you need to wear a certain amount or look a certain way to fit in to society because you know what I'm over that I'm over the whole fitting in I'm over the whole you know oh a, a woman does this a, a man does this a woman looks this way a man looks this way screw all of that throw all of the knowledge that you know be you that is all that you need to do is be you and be authentically you and that is all that I have for this makeup tips for my trans women out there. I hope that you enjoyed. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you guys have not already. And I will have my last video linked right here. Stay on the channel, have a couple laughs, learn a couple makeup techniques, and I will see you guys all in my next video. Bye guys.